I'm so excited for today's video. I'm going to be showing you the new and revamped three palettes from Cleona Cosmetics. Yes, we're getting eyeshadow palettes. So these have previously launched few years ago and the packaging was hand painted and there were two palettes in the collection the paleo and the archaeo and they've added a new palette the oceano palette i never tried the original two palettes but i always wish i had gotten them because i feel like at this point they're just a piece of makeup history so let's get right into each of the palettes and i was sent these in pr so thank you so much to cleona for sending these over to me and i also do have an affiliate code which, which i will put up on the screen and thank you so so much if you do use my code so let's get into these palettes i'm going to be showing you swatches of the entire color story as i'm talking through but i will be showing you each of the shimmers swatched individually talking about the color the finish etc so first up is the archaeo palette from what i've seen in the original palettes the color stories do seem to be a bit different and definitely a little bit more cohesive so this palette has all of the mattes at the top and all the shimmers at the bottom which i love those kinds of layouts so these all have varying kind of shimmers and textures so some of them have metallics dual chromes multi chromes foils and also satin shades this palette and the paleo have three multi-chrome eyeshadows and the oceano palette has four multi-chromes so i think it's a really nice mixture between you're getting some special shades but it's not jam-packed with special shades this is a very grungy very fall kind of color story i really really love this one i think this might be one of my favorites and i will also be putting up on the screen i took top down photos of these and i will be showing you the color story with a black and white background because i think it will allow you to see the color story a little bit better I love these palette designs, but I think it's a little bit busy on the inside So it's a little bit harder for me at least personally to really get a feel for the color stories So hopefully that will be helpful to you and then the next palette is the paleo palette So kind of similar vibes across all of these. I love the kind of paint swashing Speckled abstract design of all of these and the colors of course match the inside color story So I think this one is still a little bit on the grungy side This one has more deepening up shades and again We have three multi chromes in this one and some dual chrome this shade right here is a foil it looks absolutely beautiful and i'm wearing that one on the lid right now actually and then the shade above it is a satin so you're getting a lot of different kind of vibes from all the different shimmers in here and then lastly the oceano palette again beautiful packaging and then the inside color story is definitely more colorful you have a coral aqua blue and then these two shimmers these two, wait till you see these watch these are so beautiful they're almost like glowing like neon and then two deepening up shades which i love and then there's four multi-chromes in this palette and i definitely want to mention even before we get into the individual swatches of all the shimmers that these are predominantly very very smooth shimmers there are a couple of shades across the palettes that have maybe just the tiniest bit more texture to them no super textured or flaky shimmers so none of these will accentuate skin texture for sure so these palettes are the comeback of cleona mattes i know that they've reformulated they've been working on this formula and i'm so so excited to see mattes from them and also eyeshadow palettes from them so these palettes are going to be launching july 5th at 3 p.m eastern time and the paleo and archaeo palettes will be about $72.80 and then the oceano palette will be about $80 and then you can get them as a bundle which will save you some money for $214.70 and you can use a code on top of that so I'm going to be showing you detail swatches of the shimmers comparisons two looks with each of the palettes and I'll be giving you some of my thoughts at the end of the video so let's get right into it first up paleo palette glacial is a shimmer it's a really beautiful kind of light sky blue and it's very smooth arctic waters is a duochrome it's pretty subtle it's also less shiny i would say than glacial it's a teal blue duochrome ice core is a multi-chrome it is very smooth and very shiny it has a little bit of a slightly brown base and it flashes green straight on shifting to teal to blue to purple it is very very shifty trench is a navy blue velvet satin epoch is a multi-chrome very smooth peach straight on with pink flex throughout it shifting to yellow archaea is a multi-chrome it's got a little bit of a pinky purple flash straight on and it shifts all the way to a true green like almost a darker green as well depending on the lighting and the angle but I see a little bit of orange and yellow in between as well to transition that shift 
and this one is very smooth and finely milled metallic. Crater is a foiled eyeshadow, very smooth. It has extra sparkle to it. It's got maybe slightly tiny bit more of a texture than the rest of the shades in the palette, but it is completely smooth, super, super high shine, very metallic, but also has sparkle to it. And this is a reddish brown. Moving on to the Archeo palette, this is Glyph, which is a multi-chrome. It's a mid-tone cooler purple. It's got a little bit of smokiness to it. It's not necessarily like a black base, but it definitely is darker. It seems to be in between a jeweled and a jeweled light. And it's a very shiny, very smooth. Sundial is a metallic and it's really beautiful, punchy orange. Neo is a multi-chrome, beautiful baby blue straight on. Shifting to periwinkle with flashes of aqua as well in there, but in between. A couple of different purples going on here. I feel like the tones slightly change as the light moves. And this one is a very smooth and very shiny. I do think this one is shinier than Sundial, however. Sulfur is a duochrome, really vibrant pale yellow with hints of lime. Terrain is a multi-chrome, very smooth, and this one flashes orange, has a lime base, and then it's also a yellow shift. Artifact is a beautiful terracotta metallic, very smooth and very reflective. And lastly is the Oceano palette. This is Mauna Loa. And this is a really, really vibrant coral straight on, shifting to peach all the way to yellow gold. Such a dimensional shade, very smooth. This one is pretty sheer, but you could definitely build it up. Bioluminescent is an iridescent shade. It has just the tiniest bit of a hint of a yellow base, but it's only visible at certain angles and lighting. And this one has a very true cobalt blue flash straight on with a indigo purple shift. Title is a velvet satin and this one is also really really bright blue, very opaque. Plankton is a multi-chrome. It's got a little bit of sheerness to it. It is almost a neon bright green straight on shifting to purple almost to a magenta at a very harsh angle. Seagrass is a metallic green. It's got a little bit of an olive tone to it but it's pretty bright. And I feel like it's almost a little bit of a duochrome. I feel like I see almost like a grayish teal in between there, like as a base. Really beautiful shade. Urchin is a multi-chrome. It's got a lot of blue and purple flex throughout it straight on. And then it shifts to like a super cooler, almost smokier kind of purple. And it is very sparkly. It's got maybe just the tiniest bit more texture to it. But it does completely smooth out. Ocean Glass is a lavender, baby blue, aqua, with a bit of periwinkle in there as well. Very dimensional shade, more of like a pastel shimmer, and it's pretty opaque.
first two looks will be first two looks will be with the paleo palette and i'm going to be trying these with different eyeshadow primers as well so i can get an idea on this matte formula so first up is the natasha denona eyeshadow primer picked up magma and i'm gonna put that right into my crease and that is blending and applying very pigmented and it's blending very nicely these are definitely from swatching these they do seem a little bit lighter pressed so they swatched really really nicely and there is a little bit of kick up in the pan picked up tectonic i'm gonna put that on this outer corner and i'm gonna bring it just a little bit underneath my lower lash line i'm just gonna take a little bit more and tap it on and bring it underneath just really blending it out i'm going to switch to the previous brush that i was using which was the refer 13 and i wiped it off on a microfiber cloth just to make sure there's nothing left on it and i'm just blending the edges of that i'm going to go in with a little bit of more of magma and connect it to the lower lash line and also bring it out here a little bit more picked up archaea on the refer 21 brush and I misted it just with a little bit of water and that's going to go right in the center. Same brush and I misted it. I'm going to put that on this inner corner. Super, super easy to apply. Very smooth. No texture whatsoever. And here's the first finished look. For the second look, I'm going to actually prime with the Pat McGrath eyeshadow primer. These primers are very, very different from each other. Refer 13 and Pangea, and I'm gonna put that right into the crease in here. And just popping that in here. And just a little bit out here as well, just kind of blending it out. I'm gonna take just a little bit more. Picking up Moraine, and I'm just gonna pop that I'm going to create an eyeshadow wing with the Game Beauty EO5 brush. I'm just going to bring it underneath my little lash line. I have a little bit of fallout underneath there. There's quite a bit of kick up in the pan. And then I'm just going to work this outwards. It's really nice and sharp. And for this fallout, I'm just going to take a brush, like a fluffy brush. I'm going to push upwards the bristles. And that should be pretty good. I might need to go in and just go over this area with this sponge. Taking a pencil brush, I'm picking up Ice Core. And I'm just going to mist it. And I'm going to layer this over the mat. Oh, that is so pretty. I love that. And the shift is very obvious in it. It's super shifty. Picked up Glacial and misted my brush. I'm just going to put that all over the lid. Just going to feather it out here. Not fully opaque. And here's the second finished look. Next two looks are with the Oceano palette. And I'm going to do the same thing using the Natasha Denona eyeshadow primer on this eye and then the Pat McGrath on the other eye. So I'm just going to be kind of alternating between the primers so we get a feel for how the mattes work on the two different primers. I know some people don't like one look on each eye, but I have a full-time job and I commute into the office three times a week with a three to three and a half hour commute total each day. And this is the way I can do the most looks, thus testing out more shades in the palette. Picking up undertow, very, very, definitely getting some fallout. The shade is definitely pretty, uh, quite a bit of kick up. I just barely dipped in. So I'm just going to leave that like this for now. And then I think I want to go in with a lighter blue. I'm going to go in with a Lagoon on just the edge of that. And I'm just first kind of putting it there. For sure, very powdery. I'm getting quite a bit of fallout. And I'm going to take a clean-ish brush. I'm just going to go over the edges. 
So I'm not adding any more product. I'm only distributing what is on my lid and I'm just fading this outwards. Next I'm taking Starfish. I love this kind of color combination. Teal and coral, blue and coral together. Definitely a favorite. So I'm just popping that right into the crease. And I don't want to blend it in here too much, but I definitely want it to just touch just a little bit. And I'm just going to go in with my pinky and I'm going to pick up Mauna Loa. And I'm just going to pop that all over the lid essentially. Oh, this is such a beautiful, really, really vibrant shade. And it's very, very smooth. Here's the finished look. already primed with the Pat McGrath primer and I'm taking Manta Ray and I'm going to create a little bit different kind of eyeshadow wing. It's going to be a little bit thicker. It's going to be a little bit more like a graphic liner type. So I'm just going to make it pretty thick. And I'm just layering on a little bit more. And then winging this out. I'm going to bring it up here just a little bit. And I'm going to bring it about halfway and then I'm just going to feather right here in between. And then I'm just going to slowly fix this wing. I definitely think I need to fix it. <laughs> I think it went a little bit. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the shape right now. I'm actually just going to use the Natasha Denona primer and I'm just gonna put a little bit here and I'm gonna use this blend bunny brush and I'm just gonna take it along the bottom line feather it downwards I'm just gonna go back in a little bit more with this shade and I really want to use Bioluminescent, and I'm just going to put that all over the lid. I just missed my brush with some water, and that's just going to go all the way, all the way across, up into my crease. New crease color, just using the shimmer, and here's the second finished look. And finally, two looks with the Arceo palette. Primed with the Natasha Denona eyeshadow primer. Nomad. I think I'm going to do a halo eye. I haven't done a halo eye in a while. In a while. Just not something I gravitate towards. So I'm just popping that. Super pigmented. And I'm just kind of packing it on and it's just kind of blending. And then I'm picking up Lichen and it's going to go on this outer corner. And also connect to my lower lash line. I'm just first worried about getting it down and then I'm going to put it on the inner corner as well and then I'm going to go back in with this brush and a little bit of Nomad and I'm just going to feather the edges and then I'm going to pick it up again and I'm going to go on this outer corner and onto my lower lash line and then I dip just a little bit into Lichen and I'm just going to further merge those together. I really want to use that bright yellow shimmer. And then just blending it up in here a little bit more. I think I'm going to wipe off my brush and take a little bit more Nomad. And just place it in here. Blend, blend, blend. Taking a clean fluffy brush and just going over the edges. And then I'm just going to use my pinky and I'm picking up Sulfur. And this is gonna be so glorious. Oh, that's so pretty. Super, super smooth. Not necessarily sparkly, just a really like bright, glowy with zero texture accentuation. So nice. I'm just gonna make sure that it's fully blended into the mattes. Here's the first finished look. Prime with the Pat McGrath Primer. I really want to use Terrain, but I really want to do a more neutral look with this palette. So I'm going to use Fragment and Monolith. So first I'm taking Fragment and just putting that with a relatively larger, fluffier blending brush. This is 13 Max. And I'm just going to sweep that all into my crease and a little bit to the outer corner. 
there's not going to be really any deepening up. I have monolith, and I'm just going to put that on the outer corner and a little bit underneath my lower lash line. And I'm going to wipe this off and I'm just going to further blend this out here. And then going back to the 13 Max, there's no product left on it. I'm just feathering everything out. And I'm going to use Artifact, I think. I think I'm going to use Artifact. I haven't used the Fairney Pixie Poxy yet, so I will be using it for this look. And I'm just putting it all over the lid. Picked up Artifact, and that's going to go on this outer portion of my lid. That goes so perfectly with those matte tones. And then I'm going to take Sundial and put that on this inner kind of half of my lid, whatever I left open. And then I really want to go into Sulfur. I really want to go into Sulfur now and highlight up there. Picked up Sulfur on a pencil brush and I missed it and I'm just going to go right here. Kind of like a faux half cacri situation but with a shimmer. Do have a little bit of shimmer fallout. And here's the second finished look. Between, between two of the looks with each of the palettes, I did use majority, if not all, of the matte eyeshadows. So I did dip into them and try them out. But of course, I do have to try these out quite a bit more and blend some of the other shades together to really get a feel for this formula, especially because it is a new formula to Cleona. So it's not like a Blend Money palette or Bella Beauté bar, which already have an established matte formula that I'm very familiar with. That being said, I am pretty familiar with the shimmers, but there are some newer finishes in here. And in none of these feel squishy or wet or thick. These all have a, a normal shimmer formula that's not too dry but also not oily or squishy so let's talk about each of the palettes again i love the packaging i think it's just really nice i love the really large name of the palette on each of these palettes themselves feel really nice and sturdy they have a little bit of heaviness to them probably because these are magnetic pans you can take these pans out and you can rearrange them to your liking however the shades are not labeled on the back so you will have to label them yourself which i will definitely be doing because I really want to do some BYOPs now with some of these stained glass collection shimmers and the mattes in these palettes. But I'm very, very excited to see matte eyeshadows come back from Cleona Cosmetics. So based on so far what I've tried, and I have tried many, many matte eyeshadows across different brands. So I kind of get a feel for, okay, these are more similar to this brand or these are more similar to another brand to just give you an idea kind of what to expect because they are their custom formula. To me, the mattes are most similar to the Terra Moons mattes in terms of there is a lot a lot of kick up I mean you just tap your brush in there and there's a lot of kick up in there but I think that these perform and blend together better I've had some issues with Tara Moon's mattes where they kind of blended each other away and just they didn't blend as easily or layered as easily and I think these are very very pigmented right off the bat probably partially because they seem to be lighter pressed. So if you like very pigmented and very blendable mattes, then I think you will enjoy these. But if kick up bothers you, then that's definitely something to consider. I will be doing my eyeshadow before I do my base when I use these mattes because I was getting a little bit of fallout here and there, which is not really a huge deal, but I do just prefer to be able to wipe it away without trying to not disturb my foundation. But back to the specific palette, I think this is my favorite color story. I think it's just the matte tones in here are so beautiful. I think it's very cohesive. I think there's some beautiful pops of these super smooth metallic shadows. They're not like the most sparkly and not necessarily like wet looking like liquid metallic, but they have like a glow to them and they're so, so smooth. Like I said, these will just melt into the lid and I feel like these will look even better as they wear just based on the texture and my experience with similar Cleona eyeshadows that are like this. The only slightly textured shade in here is Glyph. It's a very, very tiny bit, slightly larger texture than some of these other shades. All the shimmers pick up really, really easily with a brush. You can use a tacky primer or you can just mist your brush with some water. That helps as well. Or you can use your fingers. You can do whatever. I think these shimmers are really, really easy to use overall. So favorite color stories, this one for sure. Onto the Paleo palette, there is one foiled shimmer in here called crater and this one has it's not that it's got a little bit more texture it's got a little bit more sparkle so it just has the particles a little bit different from some of these other shades especially compared to Arkea which this one is kind of like a it's not a black base multi-chrome it actually has a bit of a lighter base it's more of like a jewel light but crater is definitely a bit more on the sparkly side so let me just show obviously the two different colors they do have a little bit of a different texture and my thumb fell off I think this color story is just very very easy to use I think you can definitely achieve more 
kind of everyday neutral kind of looks specifically because of Pangea, Magma, Tonic, and Fossil. And then Moraine is just like a little bit of that punch of color in here. And then of course you have a lot of the blues on the top. So this is like half a neutral, half a blue palette. And then lastly, the Oceano palette, which is also the new addition here. And I love that this one is a little bit more punchy in terms of the colors in here. And also these two shimmer shades are my favorite two shimmer shades between all these three palettes, just absolute stunners. If you don't love the green base of Mer, then you're definitely going to love this one because this one has like that really punchy blue color to it without that base in it, but it's still sheer. And then there's one shade Urchin, which is just, again, a little bit, just a tiny bit more sparkly, tiny bit more textured, and the mattes, again, similar across all three palettes, obviously the same formula. So very pigmented right off the bat, layerable, and also very blendable. So those are my initial thoughts on these three palettes. Let me know in the comments below if you plan on picking any of these up i would love to hear your thoughts and if you enjoyed the video and or you found it helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching i hope to see you next time